Questions to those who invoke the saints, as in the Aulia, Albeit, Sheikh Imam, Peer Sub X, Y, Z, and Lady Saints. So, Tayyip, um, as you might know, those who hold the beliefs that one can literally in dua invoke other than Allah and ask them for all his needs, you know, like there's no distinction. These people, they don't make any distinction. You can ask uh, your lady saint or your male saint. In fact, some of them have a whole plethora, a whole set of lady saints. For example, the Imamites, they have Fatima alayhi salam and Lady Zainab and Lady Umul Banin, Lady Ma'asuma and Qom, to mention a few. So, a few are a female Muslimah. Female Muslimahs invoke Allah alone in the dua. They don't uh, ask the prophets anything inappropriate or anything about their private life. In fact, they ask nothing. They pray only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even the salawat, for example, when we say Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad, this is not praying to the prophet. This is praying for the prophet. We are praying di directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly to Allah so that Allah blesses the Prophet. Even this is delivered to the Prophet, as we know according to authentic narrations, via an angel. So, Muslim women, they do not ask any non-mahram for anything. They do not converse with any non-mahram, whether he's alive or he's in Barzakh, not in this world anymore. You want to call it dead, shaheed, whatever you want to call it. And Muslim man, they don't invoke anybody else, anybody other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they invoke in the dua. And um, they don't speak and call non-mahrams. Huh? The default is you don't speak to them and you don't, let alone calling on them for all your needs. But now contemplate about this. Those who say that, uh, yes, call upon Abdul Qadir Jilani and call upon this lady saint and call upon Fatima, Mulbani, Zainab, and so on. Now, they are not your mahrams, your male, yeah, the hypothetical scenario now, but which is based on a reality on creed. On creed of those who say this, totally fine. Sih ya Ali Madad, Sih ya Fatima Adrikni, ya Fatima Akhithini. Uh, shout, Ya Ali Mada, shout, Ya Fatima, help me. So it's based on this creed, on their creed. So if you say that, yes, of course, you can ask all your needs from Fatima and from Ahl Bayt, they are wasile. Yeah, Allah never dec declared them as wasile. Huh? Allah never, there's zero shred, there's no shred of evidence that their souls are floating around and they're here um, awaiting your calls, your help calls. And you know, looking for shubahat, or oh, this Sufi said, or oh, Kitab al Ruh, Fulan, Illan, these are, they, they will not save you on the Day of Judgment. There's zero evidence in this. Huh? So the question is when Ali bin Abi Talib was alive, would anybody dare to call his wife, rather in private or in public as they do, like in the Hussein Yad when they beat themselves, grown man, half naked? Slapping and beating themselves, yeah, Fatima, Arithini, Madad, 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 Arithini, for hours. <laughs> if they would do this when Ali was alive, what would you think would happen to them? I have no doubt that Ali bin Abi Talib would um, punch them, smack them, show you, how you can them, finishing move them. But he, that's a bare minimum. That's a bare minimum. Ali bin Abi Talib would wipe the floor with them and annihilate them. 
was he's a man of ghira he's asadullah al ghalib radiyallahu anhu who are these people calling his wife in non mahram asking for all their needs when did islam came with such a concept the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam 23 years da'wah to tawhid to tell the people oh, yeah, you know uh, no more ya maryam madad and isa madad and uh, this saint and this wali and this idol I'll replace them with myself and my cousin and his my daughter and my cousin's descendants from a Persian princess. You know, call upon them now. This is not Islam. Islam didn't come with this. So apart from invoking other than Allah and dua being shirk, uh, from every angle it is wrong. From so many angles, you can pinpoint and show how wrong it is, how bottle it is, how false it is. Or as the Arabs say, whatever is built upon falsehood is false itself. Now if you say, but wait a second, yeah, all right, if Fatima and Ali would be alive, I would not uh, shout her name and ask her for all my needs. But it's different, you have the hobby, you know, they're now in the Barzakh and they're Shuhada, they're alive. What's the difference? Islamic manners and etiquettes and norms and uh, they changed, Adab, they changed. You're saying it yourself. You're saying, okay, they're alive. As in literally alive, you say. طيب. What's the difference? When they were walking around, let's let's assume me and you are in Medina. And Ali anhu and Fatima anhu are present. You would never dare to shout and ask all your needs from her. So what's the difference if they are now in the Barzakh? What's the difference? Who said that things have changed now? Who said that she's now suddenly your mahram? To make it clearer, think about this scenario. Which again, it's not far-fetched. It's not far-fetched. It's based on your aqidah. On the aqidah of those who say, yes, call upon Fatima. Call upon them. Uh, all your needs. Whether you say that, uh, uh, yes, she herself will solve all your problems. Or whether you believe that she's a delivery girl. Because that's what they say. That's why they bypass Allah. Even in the du'as, in the most famous du'as. When they say, for example, Ya Ali, Madad, Ya Fatima, and so on. Allah, there's not even a place for Allah. That much respect they have for Allah. And then they come with pathetic excuses. Yes, but you know, it actually means uh, Ya Fatima, go ask Allah. Or Ya Ali, go ask Allah. It's a, it's a lie. You know, they hold with khushu and khudur. They ask directly from this the buried entombed saint. And the Ayatollah, as if I've shown on my channel, you can check my videos. They openly, some of them who are very severe in shirk and are open, they openly say, they say, yeah, 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 Allah, with the permission of Allah, where Allah never gave this permission, zero evidence. With the, they add their favorite clause, you know, salesman argument. Oh yeah, with the permission of Allah. No, 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 you don't need our uh, imam ask Allah. No, 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 ask the imam directly. The imam will answer you. Fatima will answer you. Fatima will come to your help. So type, whether Fatima will come directly to your help, or she will deliver it like a delivery girl. Stuff Allah. Yeah, this, 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 that's, that's what you believe with regards to them huh? as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not even appointed his prophets to be like delivery boys, secretaries who deliver the du'as to him let alone the Ahl Bayt and anybody uh, uh, and other than the Ahl Bayt so whether you believe that you can uh, you ask Fatima in your response directly comes directly literally to your, help, your aid or you believe that she is like a delivery girl delivered to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't make a difference. In either case, it is aib. It is not from Islam. It's not from Islam to call upon it. And as I said, to make it absolutely clear, let's take the scenario of Ayatollah Abdul Zahra, let's call him. These Ayatollahs, they are the culprits. They teach, they advocate the belief that yes, call upon Ma'suma, Zainab, Fatima, Umul Banin, ask them your hajat, Ruqayya. Ask them. Ask them for your needs, your hajat. They are the fulfillers of all your needs. Tayyip. We can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything, right? Of course, there's with manners and etiquette and we don't ask Allah for something haram. But we can share with Allah our deepest thoughts, private life, intimacy, and if every, things that have to do with intimacy, including sexual life. Yeah, we can, we can, we can share this with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's our, our Rabb. He's our Lord. He's our creator. Allah is beyond imagination. He's neither male nor female. Allah is our creator. You can ask him all of this. And we do this. Muslim do this. And they do they can ask Allah for everything. That is halal. So let's say there's this example of Ayatollah uh, 
Abd Zahra. And he's impotent. He's impotent. And he's old. And he asked Allah to cure him. Huh? To strengthen his. You know, to strengthen him. Now, can you do this? If you say, oh, astaghfirullah, look at Nasabi. Don't give me this Nasabi accusations. The Ahl al are dearer to me, to us Ahl al-Sunnah, than our own selves, than our own mothers. In fact, this whole da'wah, our whole energy we put in is because we are striving to purify them and the Sahaba from the Sahaba abusers and from those who have uh, lied against Ahl al-Bayt, exaggerated the status. Attributed and all these khurafat and khuzabalat and shirkiyat and dalalat to them. So spare us the, no, look at him, no, I'll see, be insulting Fatima. Nobody's insulting Fatima, rather than an hawa alayha salam wa salamullah alayha. Hasha wa kalla. It is these people who are insulting him. By claiming that, yeah, you can ask all your needs. If you say that, yeah, well, no, it's inappropriate for Ayatollah Abdul Zahra um, to ask Fatima um, because of his problem, because he's impotent, I, I a lot. He wants that to be fixed, you know. No, astaghfirullah. You can't ask that one. Why not? Why not? So some of you claim that she's like a delivery girl, isn't it? She's, anyway, she's supposed to deliver the dua to Allah, and do you can ask Allah everything, and it strengthens the dua. It makes the dua stronger if it's delivered by one of the walis, like you know, the 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 the, the, the Shia Church, like as if Islam is some Catholic. Catholic religion, you know, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came and replaced uh, Fatima with uh, Ya Maryam with Fatima and Ya Ali with Ya Jesus and the saints of the church with the 12 Imams and whatnot and so on and so forth. So why not? Can you do this? If you say that, no, that's uh, this aib, that's obscene, uh, that's haram, how can someone ask a lady saint for things that are related, let's say, to sexual issues then a rational reply to you is why where's the restriction who, who told you there's such a restriction if you claim that Allah appointed them as wasail as in literally as intercessors in all our duas and it's better to ask them first then we should ask them for everything including this now you see how absurd how wrong false battle it is to call, invoke other than Allah in dua, in dua. See how false it is. And he, apart from it being shirk, every Muslim who knows the Quran, every aql understands that this is not from Islam. Islam is not some Catholic form of religion. Where there's saint worship and invocation of the saints and depiction of the saints. Apart from that, from so many angles is wrong. You see why? So think about it. Ponder over this. I'm not here to ridicule you. I'm not here to mock your beliefs. I'm here to make you think. I used to be one of you. I used to make these du'as. And um, Allah guided me. And if you are worthy of guidance, Allah will guide you as well. Allah will guide you as well. I'm a well-wisher. I'm a nasihun. I'm giving you nasiha. So think about this. Calling upon other than Allah, apart from being shirk. There's so many. It is. There's so many problems with this concept. And one of it is that if we can from the angle females calling upon their male saints for all their needs and the males calling upon the female saints for all their needs huh? whether they believe they directly going to come and respond or they're going to deliver the message in either case it's battle it's wrong you can't do that that's why you call upon allah alone directly ya allah ya allah madad and ya ali khan madad Ya Jesus can madad. Ya Abu Bakr can madad. None of them can do madad. Ya Allah madad. Only and only.